you how to use Remotes Unlimited case CD41 to, re to replace the case on this older used um, Chrysler 4 button remote. Before starting, we recommend you do a few things. First, look at the back of the old remote and check the FCC ID number, which is embossed on the back. It's kind of hard to read these FCC ID numbers uh, without good light, but uh, you can probably find it on there. Um, this replacement case will work for any Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep uh, uh, remote that has an FCC ID starting with GQ4. There are several different FCC IDs that, that start with those letters that um, can be replaced with this case. Uh, basically almost anything that is this shape from Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep and that's an OE remote um, will fit into this replacement case. I'm going to start by um, opening up the back of this and pulling out the components. You'll see that there's one CR2016 battery inside, loose inside the package. Um, the replacement case is usually attached to the insert card with fugitive glue. You can just rub that off with your hand in that fashion. And if you haven't already done so, you should look at the insert card inside and note that there's step-by-step -step instructions inside and there's also other information, um, including the information that tells you what has to be transferred from the old re remote into the new case for it to work. Let's open up the new case, um, which in this case, on the original remote and on the replacement, there's a slot to the low, on the lower right-hand part of the case that a dime fits nicely into. You can open it by toggling it, prying up and down on that area. And you'll see that there's a second battery inside the replacement case. This uh, particular, these particular remotes use two batteries, um, and we put one inside the case so that it, they weren't touching with the other battery um, while the package was in transit. And then there's a bladder button pad. Let's open the used remote. You don't need to take the split ring off. Um, usually when you pry these cases you can get it apart enough that you can open it with your fingers and you can leave the two parts attached. Now we're going to pull the circuit board out by grabbing on the rubber button pad along the edge and lifting up. If it's particularly hard to pull up, you can press the buttons from the front to push it out. And then if you pull back the, the bladder, you'll see that there's a separate button contact inside the bladder. We need to take that out because that's going to be used in the new remote. And when you take it out, you may want to note that there's a, a kind of a side where the buttons um, stick up a little bit. That's going to be the side that goes toward the button pad. So we'll take the new button pad and we'll go ahead and put that inside just by putting it deeply down inside that button pad. And then we'll place the circuit board on top. In that fashion. And then we'll put that inside the front of the new case. And sometimes you have to work it a little bit or, or um, press it in from a different angle in order to get all the buttons to go through smoothly into the front of the case. You want all the buttons to show through like push through their holes like that and you want the ladder to be kind of sitting against the front of the case uniformly all the way around. Like that. Now the challenging portion with placing this case is that underneath these two old batteries which we'll take out and put aside is the battery contact. The battery contact looks like this and you'll see that it sits, there's a little plastic post sitting through a hole in the battery contact right at the base of it. What we want to do is pry that battery contact up without bending it too much. And the best way to do that is to put a knife blade in from the end and set it so that it goes just on one side of the post, pry up a little bit on that side, 
then change it to the other side of the post, pry up a little bit on that side and keep doing that until it pops off that post. And once it pops off that post, you'll be able to get it. So when it lifts up like that, so you want to remove that without bending it too, too severely. Now that'll fit into the new, the back of the new case. Um, and you just have to position it to get that hole on the post again in the new case. And once you get it on the post, you can use the knife again to kind of push it down on both sides of the post. Sometimes it snaps nicely down right away. Sometimes you have to push on both sides a little bit. Now we're going to take our new CR2016 batteries and these will be placed in with the plus side up. One on top of the other and they are held in place by brackets on the back. And now all we need to do is to put the back of the case and the front of the case together. We want to make sure that it's oriented correctly before pressing and then we just press until we hear a little snap. Oh, we're not getting it. That's not together very well. Let's press it together again. We'll get the positioning right. Yeah, we got a good snap together that time. This case looks like it's not as tight as it could be. In any event, what you want is for it to fit tightly around on all sides. And voila, you have your replacement case.